back to uh, Elizabeth Pratt, if I can get to it. There's Elizabeth Pratt. I only have approximate dates. I don't. I actually don't have exact dates for, for these individuals. I have her born. It's. I have her birth year. Her year of birth as 1756, because the Scott Magazine said she was uh, 35 when she married Dr. Morton. So I make it 1791. Otherwise, that's the only evidence I have for what her birthday was. Um, now, um, I wanted to know. I don't even have a death record for Elizabeth Pratt, but Elizabeth Pratt ended up marrying John Bacon. And they actually had three children. And I don't know their exact birth years, but um, I do have a death record for John William Bacon in 1821 on an exact year. I've got some references in here that I've been able to kind of fit together. Uh, Elizabeth Pratt here, um, I have assumed died before 17 July 1728 because of the next part of the will that's going to come up. I would like to find her her actual death date. Okay, so it says on July 17th, 1828, uh, additional administration proceedings regarding interest earned on the estate. Charles Morton is named as having lived in the county of Middlesex. His wife, Elizabeth Pratt, since Charles Morton's death, had married Mr. Bacon, that's who that is, and she was deceased prior to July 17, 1828. That's what it says. At that point, administration was granted to Anna Maria Beckwer, B-E-W-K-W-O-R, quote, the spinster of Inglefield Green on behalf of Fanny Wally, formerly Gould spinster, wife of the Reverend Cedric Wally, Clerk, Doctor in Divinity, and then John Esquo, John S, John Tatlow Esquire, and John Kiesel Esquire. And so uh, we know who John Tatlow is. We don't know. We have no idea why or what. And I still don't know why or what. Um, uh, this Fanny Fanny Gould would have anything to do with it. Now there's a little genealogical chart out there about Fanny Gould, and now that starts bringing up some very strange references that come up. Fanny Gould um, happened to be uh, re somehow uh, happened to live in the same household as Mary Shelley who wrote Frankenstein. <laughs> it was very strange. And Anna Maria Beckwer, I've actually seen her her will and it's written originally in French. And doesn't and and she happened to be the wife of a man that she married after having three illegitimate children with him, and uh, one of those children's names was Charles. Very very odd, very awkward. Now it seems like this you could just say, oh, there's the Charles. That's Charles Kerr. It must be. We have it's all solved. And maybe Anna Maria Beckworth was. You know, you, know, you can get all these weird theories. I think it's the wrong. <coughs> <coughs> route to go down. Uh, someone tried to um, uh, posted a message at Ancestry.com and discussed, uh, she's living in New Zealand and she contacted um, the archives that hold Anna Maria Beckworth's um, uh, estate papers, some of them, and the archivist just said that the papers were too fragile and numerous to actually dig through and actually look over so that that was kind of snookered out I wanted to follow that lead to see if I could find out why on earth because uh, I, I don't there is no familiar connection that I am aware of um, none of Char uh, Charles Morton's name beneficiaries appear to have anything to do with this but Charles Morton is at least party to um I think it was Anna Maria Beckworth's mother, maybe that's who it was, that died. And he was at least party to some kind of lease or something there. So he may have been leasing the property that he owned at Twickingham to this family, and that may just be it. Seems like it's the most reasonable explanation. But if there's some other kind of... Um, but why they would 
why uh, a tenant that's living at Twickingham would be named as the executor, I can only imagine that um, they thought it reasonable to do solely because John Tatlow, a tenant, was also <laughs> named as an executor. I, I, that's about all I could think of. Okay, so I've covered his will in short. Um, it is about five pages long, but that's in general what it's about. I'm going to stop here and then um, I'm going to cover the death of his grandson and some evidence that popped up there.